Um, let me ask you a question. What did you think of the title Winter Girls and did you want, what, how did you interpret what I was trying to do with that word? Which I totally made up because English is a beautiful language. I thought that um, it was a really cool um, <clears throat> metaphor, uh -huh. sort of, and I loved the ending where it said that like she was thawing, which really made it good. But, um, the websites she kept going to, yeah. I thought that was pretty crazy. And at the end, when she was going there, she was able to see how those girls were still uh, like in snow. And right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, reading it, you mentioned Winter Girls in the book a few times, mm -hmm. and my definition was kind of a girl that was cold on the inside, kind of dead, but not right. like not actually dead. Right. And. Um, I guess Winter Girls refers to Leah and uh, Cassie, Cassie, Cassie right. but it also refers to all those other girls that were that she was reading their stories about on the right. computer. Right. And it's just I guess this is a story of just two Winter Girls, mm -hmm. but there's also like hundreds and hundreds more. Yeah. Does anybody know the myth of Persephone? Greek myth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of vaguely. This is the one where. Uh, Persephone's mom is Demeter, who's the Greek goddess of fertility oh, yeah. and um, um, cereal. Her name, or, uh, we get the word cereal from her, I guess Demeter is the Roman name, I think Ceres, C-E-R-E-S is her Greek name. And Persephone was her daughter, I think her only child. And um, the lord of the underworld, Hades, thought that uh, he wanted to marry, which is a nice way of saying it, Persephone. So he, he kidnapped her one day and he took her to the underworld and she spent, depending, and there's very, various tellings of this myth, she spent three or four or five or six months under, in, living with the lord uh, of Hades, Hades in the underworld until finally her mom found her. Now while she was in hell, her mother was circling the globe seeking out her daughter and the world fell into winter because the goddess of fertility and the crops didn't allow the growing season to go on. And so for me, when I think of people, girls and boys, who are struggling with eating disorders, to me they feel emotionally frozen. They're stuck. Um, and they're, it's almost like, and their souls, like you, really, when you're, you can, I talk to adult women um, who've had eating disorders and you can still, they're very young still, if they're still deep in, in, in that eating disorder, in the, in the hell of it, they're still kind of at that age they were when they went into it because they haven't been able to you know, be healthy enough to keep growing and maturing the way a person would. So that's where the phrase winter rolls came up for me. What kind of questions do you guys have? You haven't said anything. <laughs> um, I thought it was kind of interesting that like she would be saying that she wanted to eat but right. then she didn't because I, she made a promise to Cassie that she'd be the skinniest girl. Right. So like all the time, she kept she wanted to eat, but she just wouldn't. Right, wouldn't let her. Sleep. And also part of that was um, ignoring what her mother was saying. She didn't want to listen to what she was telling her to do. Right. So it was also resistance. Oh yeah. What was research it? did you do for this book? What research did I do? Um, well, I've had I've talked to a lot of uh, teenagers who've been um, trapped in eating disorders. Um, when I was a teenager. My mom was fairly anorexic. They weren't classifying it back then, but my mother definitely came to the table, uh, literally, with her own eating issues, um, which then were passed on to my sister and I. And I don't think I've ever had what would be clinically classified as an eating disorder, but at different points in my life, especially when I was struggling with depression, that would be one of the ways that my depression would come out. Um, would be really unhealthy thoughts. You know, you get that voice in your head, you know, stupid, ugly, fat, you know, all that kind of stuff. And even to this day, I've now learned that when I start to hear that in my head, it's like, oh, you know what, I really need a nap. Because <laughs> if that voice is in my head, that, that means I'm tired, I'm overwhelmed, I need to deal with whatever stress is making me feel bad. But when I was younger, I totally lived that. Um, so I, I, I talk to kids who are stuck in the middle of it, figured out, you know, and my readers are so good to me. Y'all write to me, email, Facebook, MySpace. It's so cool. I love it. I love my life. Um, and then I needed to make sure, though, that I was representing um, the medical and psychological reality of somebody stuck like this. So I talked to the, my friend who's a pediatrician, um, and she found me another um, professional 
um, a psychotherapist, I think she is, um, who read the manuscript. And, and this woman worked in an eating disorders clinic for 20 years. So she could make sure that, you know, that the signs of the body breaking down came in the right sequence and the psychological stuff was in order to. It was a hard book to write. It was a very painful book to write because I think like actors, writers have to submerge themselves, especially if you're telling from the first person point of view, you submerge yourself in your character. So um, I was actually working really heavily on it at this point last year and I was a very unhappy person. You know, because I was just living Leah. And I was like, oh, that's hard. It's really hard. <coughs> Is it, uh, was it coincidental that the name Winter Girls and then that scene where it, like, basically sort of all started when Cassie and Leah are in the snow and Cassie's howling and then they make the oath? No, it wasn't coincidental at all. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't coincidental. That's, that's, it was um, winter at that. It was winter at that time. That's the kind of stuff that if you point that out to your English teacher, they're like, oh my god, you're so smart. <laughs> I'll give you another, I'll give you a bonus point for your essay on that one. Um, the thing in, the, the, you'll also, there's like a little subtextual mentions of uh, pomegranates in this story. Do you know why? In the Greek myth of Persephone, um, she, her mother goes to, to, re, to redeem her, to pull her out and save her. And the Lord of Hades says, uh-uh, not so fast, lady. She ate, um, depending on the myth, three or four or five, six pomegranate seeds while she was there. And that means that once a year, she has to return to spend that number of months in the underworld again. And so if you read carefully, I mean, you know, I don't expect anybody to pick this stuff up on the first read through. I hope you're just reading it through to enjoy the story. But if you have to write an essay on it, <laughs> God forbid, and you go back and you read it again, you'll notice, for example, that scene um, uh, when the, the snow and they got kind of drunk and they do the blood oath and the um, drops of blood fall like seeds onto the snow. And there's a couple of other mentions of pomegranate and seeds and things, so yeah. It also seemed like um, the title, Winter Girls, it also seemed like it was the winter and winter's like there's blizzards and you can't see anything ahead of you exactly. and you're just lost and there's nothing you can I do. I love that interpretation. Yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to go for. Nice, nice work. What other questions do you have for me? Well, I liked in the book how Cassie was in a way stalking her. Yeah, yeah, like that's the a good ghost way to put it. of Cassie. Yeah. Like how she got up in the coffin and just walked away. What did you think when you read that scene? I, for a second, I thought she came back to life. Yeah. But then, yeah. like, you realize that it's just her hallucinating and not sort of dealing with her friend's death. Right. 